All right, guys, what's up? What is that thing? Anyway, so it is time for the Q&A video. Um, I figured I would just take a little drive, bring you guys with me. It's probably the easiest way for me to film anymore at this point. Um, so I shared on YouTube and Facebook my story of how I became a dad, my story of becoming a foster parent and my first placement and all that good stuff. So if you haven't watched that, um, go check that out. Uh, it's on YouTube or my Facebook. So I asked you guys to ask me questions uh, about that video, any questions you had about my life in general. And I have a few, not very many, because no one seems to like me, but it's okay. Um, I'll answer the ones that I have. So we're just gonna drive, and I will answer the questions. Just on a little trip here. All right, so Paige asked, what are the requirements for becoming a foster parent? So I will answer that question. I'm just gonna say that for the last, because it's quite a list. So if you are interested in becoming a foster parent and you're wondering like, hey, what are the requirements? Stick around to the end of the video and I will tell you all about it. All right, Clar Clarissa said, tell us about being not married and fostering the talent let me try that again Clarissa asked or said tell us about being not married and fostering the challenges of essentially being a single father all right so with that uh i'm very blessed uh i don't feel like i am a single father um i mean i guess i technically am uh so i have family and a girlfriend and friends that are so, so, so supportive of this whole entire thing um, and have been since the beginning. Like, I never got told, hey, you're crazy or nothing like that. They were very like, yeah, do it. Like, they were excited for me. Um, so from the very beginning, I had support. I had people that were um, with me from the beginning. And then since having the boys, They've um, stepped up, you know, do you need anything? Do you need money? Do you need us to go anywhere or get anything? Like, super supportive. Um, they've watched the boys when I've had stuff to do. Like, I've never felt alone in the matter of this. So, hopefully that actually answered that question. Anyway, and then to add on that, Leanne said, and how you handled all the arrangements so last minute, what you had to do, how you did it, and how you've made it work with you being single and working full time. So that's a lengthy question. So it was very last minute. Uh, I got the phone call on a Friday at work. Friday or a Thursday. I got the phone call on I think a Thursday. Yes, got the phone call on a Thursday and basically I had like 10 minutes to decide like, am I doing this, am I taking this placement or not? And foster parents, if you're watching this, you're used to that, that's, that's the world of foster care. Um, so, but the, the big thing with me was, I was all prepared for one, uh, for one foster child. I had one room, one bed, one dresser, um, and I got a call for two. And I was like, how am I going to do this? Like how, how am, if you watch the video, um, you heard the story about how the caseworker called me and she's like, hey, I got these two boys. And I'm like, I only have one bed. And her response to that was, well, can't you sleep on the couch for a while? <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, once again, family, friends, coworkers all stepped up, um, helped out. Uh, even people on the boys team, caseworkers, CASAs, all that stuff, they were super helpful. Um, asking you know, if we need anything uh, through, I mean, I helped, they helped me to get a bed for the boys. Um, me and Emily went to Ikea and bought a bunk bed, which took us three hours to put together. Thanks, Emily. That was a true test of our relationship right there. Um, and then work, uh, work, I let them obviously know ahead of time what I was doing, that I was a foster parent, and like, hey, one of these days I'm gonna get a phone call, and I'm gonna have a placement, and you just gotta work with me. And um, my boss is super understanding, super helpful. Um, 
basically said, okay, let me know what we need to do, and we did it. And so, yeah, I and mean, working full time, when the boys first came to me, they were still in school. So I would take them to school and then go to work, and then obviously they'd come on a bus and I'd get off of work. So that worked out fairly easily. Um, now that it's summer, once again, my friends and my family have stepped up. They're watching the boys, um, taking care of that whole situation. Ohio passed a law as well that kids can no now go to daycare until they're 15. So um, daycare is even an option that at one time was not an option. So that's definitely helpful. All right, so Tasha asked, let me find it. What has being a foster dad taught you about the heart of God? So I actually um, just recently did a study um, called Father Like the Father. Sorry, my Reptar air freshener swinging in the view. Um, called Father Like the Father because I wanted to, like, obviously I've never been a father. I, um, obviously I know the things that I want to instill in my children and the values and the morals I want them to have. Um, I've always known that from a very young age. But, um, so I did this, I did this study called Father Like the Father. And it was all about the heart of God, and it focused on Adam and Eve in the garden, because obviously those were God's first children, um, human children, creation, however you want to say that, those were his first. And uh, just kind of looking at the story of how God fathered them, in spite of their mistakes, and their lack of understanding, uh, just how he showed his love to them through that entire process. And so I think that's the one thing, if anything, that God has revealed to me is his love through all of this. Because if I, who, like, you know, who am I, if I can take in these broken children and I can love them in spite of their mistakes and in spite of their um, lack of understanding and all X, Y, and Z, in spite of all of that, I can love them unconditionally how much more can God love me unconditionally who is perfect and without flaw um, when I mess up and when I make mistakes so if nothing else it's opened my eyes to the truth about God's love how deep God's love goes and how just amazing God God's love is for us um, it's like I said like you know who I, I'm a mere human who messes up every day and if I have the capacity to love that way how much more can he love me um, as his child okay so now to the foster care requirements um, like I said if you don't want to watch this turn off the video it's fine I won't get super upset I mean just a little bit but um, I'm just going to I think I saved a document on my phone of all the requirements because um, I don't want to miss anything so I just wanted to kind of read over these and let you know what the requirements are if you're interested. I encourage you, if you have the smallest thought of like, hey, maybe I should foster, maybe I should adopt, look into it, pray about it, search that out. Like, the foster care system is in such a need for parents. Like, it's unreal. And like, I wish I could help more than I already am because like, these kids just need love, they're broken, they're hurting, and they deserve love. Um, so if you're thinking about that, um, pray about it, see what God says about it. If you have questions, talk to a foster parent, comment, call me, text me, something. Like, I will help you as much as I possibly know how. Anyway, now to the requirements. So let me find somewhere to pull over, actually, so I can um, read all these without interruption. Okay, so this is foster care and adoption licensing requirements. Keep in mind, this is for Ohio. So if you're watching in another state, this, my gosh, what is that? Any, sorry, squirrel. Uh, if you're watching in another state and are curious about the requirements, be sure to look it up. It should be a simple Google search. But what I want to go over is for the state of Ohio and their requirements for adoption and foster care. So, in order to, in, let me slow down. In order to adopt, you must be at least 18 years of age. In order to foster, you must be 21. 
Uh, at least one person in your home must be able to read, write, and speak English or be able to communicate effectively with both the child and the agency that placed the child in your home. So for Ohio, that's going to be English. You may be singled, singled, <laughs> you may be single or married. Uh, all orientations are acceptable. All religious affiliations are acceptable. Uh, you must be able to provide contact information for individuals who can provide references for you. So this is a case where they do check your references. Uh, I know at least for my agency, it's either a handwritten reference or an email. That is something that they do do. They do do. <laughs> I'm such a child. Um, <laughs> uh, your household must have enough income to meet the basic needs of those already living in the home and to make timely payment of shelter costs. So paying your rent or your house payment, your electric bill, your water, food, all of that has to be met already prior to becoming a foster parent. You do not have to own a home, but must have enough space available for foster children and their belongings. You can rent and foster. Um, for foster children, you must have a separate bed for each child and separate bedrooms for children if there are boys and girls over the age of five. Um, you must be free of any physical, emotional, or mental conditions that could endanger the child or seriously impair your ability to care for the child. So, uh, you have to have your doctor sign off saying that you are in good health mentally and physically to actually be a foster parent. Um, everyone 18 and over living in the house must have criminal background checks completed as well as child abuse and neglect checks. If you have something on your background and you're worried about that hindering you from being a foster parent, ask your local agency. Um, I don't know all the specifics as to what is or what isn't allowed, um, but reach out and ask. Don't just assume that since you have something on your record that you can't foster. Um, just reach out and ask and figure out for, for sure. Uh, your home must be free of hazardous conditions and pass a fire inspection and a safety audit, and you must complete all training required by your agency. So for me, that was 36 hours of pre-service training. Um, the training is completely free. You actually get reimbursed for your training, uh, $10 for every hour. So for 36 hours, that's $360 that you get reimbursed for. Um, so that's just another incentive they're doing to try to encourage people to do this process. Okay, so I hope I answered the questions clearly and it made sense. I, I tend to ramble on these videos. If you have any more questions, put them in the comments. Um, I'll either answer you there or if there's enough questions, I'll make another video. Um, like I said before, if you have any questions regarding the foster care system and what you can do to help, um, ask me, ask your local agency, ask another foster parent, reach out. You can probably help more than you think you can because uh, maybe you're thinking like, I can't be a foster parent, but I want to help. There are ways that you can help. Reach out and ask what those ways are and I'll be glad to tell you. I know others will be as well. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, subscribe, like this video. Um, if you want to get notified of when I post, click that little bell. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.